Hey guys, for this video, I'll be talking about my strategy for using options and uh, the premiums you can receive based on option uncertainty to create a reliable secondary income stream for my account. Um, important to note here, this isn't a swing for the fences type situation where you're trying to to hit it big and win as much as possible. You're just trying to make a steady stream of income, uh, relatively reliable, relatively safe, although when you get into options, there's no guarantees. So you do have to make sure that you have the funds in your account to back up any of these moves if you should be assigned a stock. Um, so with that, let's get into the stocks. All right, so my first trade was on PayPal. And if you're not familiar with how options work, I'll uh, give you a brief overview. So the type of trade I made here was a put. That means that I am selling someone the right to force me to buy PayPal from them at a certain day uh, for a certain price in the future. So basically here I'm betting that the stock is not going to drop to this level or below this level. And whoever is selling or buying this off of me uh, thinks there's a chance it might and is willing to pay me that premium for the level of safety that it would provide. So. Uh, on February 7th, which I marked uh, right here, the red line on the stock chart, I made a trade where I received $60 from someone. And um, if the stock drops below $95 a share by March 11th, uh, I will have to buy it from this person for $95 a share. So for example, let's say, um, at this date, <clears throat> PayPal's down at $70 a share. That means that I'm gonna have to buy it from him for $95 a share, which is obviously much more than it would currently be worth at that time. And um, I would be out the difference. But uh, I've drawn a red line on the chart here to show that's about 95. So that is the level at which below, uh, below this line, I'll have to buy the stock at March 11th. So um, we did get very close here. We briefly dipped down and touched it uh, before bouncing back up to 118 here, um, which means that at the end date of the trade, the the stock value was above $95. $95 therefore, the option expires worthless, and I just keep the, the $60 premium. So that's not a ton of money, obviously, but I felt the risk was pretty minimal here on PayPal. It's dropped from about $200 a share down to 118 in the last few months. Um, this is a three month chart here and we can see it was way up around 200 uh, and it hit a low, you know, around 100. So uh, it's about halved in the last month and I was just looking at the value of the stock and I felt that even if I do have to buy it for $95 a share, that's a price I'm willing to pay. It's very important when you're making these trades, um, if you're selling a put, um, make sure you're happy if you do get assigned it because basically you want to be happy either way. You want to be happy if you get your premium and nothing happens and you want to be happy if you get the stock for that price. And what I do in these income scenarios, so if I do get assigned it, I just keep selling covered calls on it at the strike price to continue to make money or alternatively roll over the stock into uh, a put at a future date at the same strike price because the goal here is not to as I said, it's not to try and make a huge amount of money, but it's trying to reliably make money off these premiums. So uh, this trade expired worthless and we made $60, not bad. So uh, let's go down to the second one. This one was on February 8th, uh, marked in red on the chart. This company is Corsair Gaming, another company I'm very happy to own at this um, level actually sorry this is this type is a covered call which means that i currently own corsair and if at the expiry date the price is at or above 22 and a half dollars a share which is at this line here i drew um over here uh if it's at or above that then the person on the other end of the trade has the right to buy it away from me at this price. So if Corsair had, for example, ended up here, say $40 a share or something, you know, they would have made a good money. But I'm happy to take this trade because I was originally assigned the stock at $22.5 a share. So 
basically I would get out at the exact same price I got in at. And in the meantime, I'm just making these premiums over and over again. And to be honest, I'm, I'm pretty confident in the future Corsair is going to be trading at above 22 and a half. So if it doesn't get called away from me, I'm happy because I'll just do it again and do it again. And at some point, I'm sure it will get called away from me. And that's the, that's the idea here. I'm not going to change my strike price gradually higher and higher and get more and more greedy. Uh, I keep it the same and we just try to create that reliable income stream. So this one was open for 36 days here, um, which is a bit of a longer length of time. It's, you know, a little over a month. Of th th those are trading days. Uh, expired on March 18th, which is actually today, the day I'm, I'm making the video. And we closed the day around $22 a share. And it had to be 22 and a half in order to get called away from me. This means that the contract expired worthless and I just make the premium of $172, uh, which is also great. So that's another $172 in our pocket. Didn't end up costing us anything. We didn't have to, um, you know, buy something. So we just took on that risk and uh, in the end, it didn't cost us a dime. Trade number three is Airbnb. This is another uh, company I like and it's important to when you're doing these trades, only do them on companies that you want to own. Don't just look for something that is paying the highest premiums because it may be a company that you don't want and you could get stuck with it. Um, you can get very burned if you do this with any company and you don't know anything about the underlying company. So make sure to do your research on this. Uh, every trade you make on one of these companies, you can do the same amount of research as if you're buying the company because in a way you sort of are, you're buying it at this price if it happens to hit that price. Now, this one is another put, which means I'm once again selling someone the right to force me to buy it at a certain day uh, for a certain price or any time in between. So I sold this put on Airbnb on February 22nd. I drew the line here uh, where, where, that, where that was in the chart. This is another three month chart, by the way. And I, I like to do these monthly. I just uh, feel it takes most advantage of the time decay. The last month of options contracts usually have the greatest time decay. So you're you're making the most money off of the time. Um, because for basically the, the time that the trade is open, um, there's a value associated with the risk of that. So <clears throat> we're open for only 19 days here. This is actually an extremely short amount of time. So the, the odds of it uh, moving a substantial amount in that amount of time are lower, but um, I actually sold four contracts of this time. So, uh, we received $520 and, uh, what you have to keep in mind is if the stock does hit and you're for forced to buy it, you make sure you're, you're able to cover that. So it, it could be having more than enough margin available. It could be having the cash on hand, but if I, if Airbnb is below 140, on March 18th, I have to spend $56,000 here to buy 400 shares because each contract is worth 100 shares. That's another thing to keep in mind. Sometimes people think that one contract is one share and they get confused when they're like, oh my God, it's 100. So uh, multiply each contract is 100 shares. So multiply it times 100. Now, we did receive $520, which is a pretty good amount considering that this is a company I'm happy to own for $140 a share and it's only open 19 days. So there's not a lot of time for the stock to drop to the level where I'll be forced to buy it. We'll see, it actually did drop below 140 for a little while here. And the person on the other side of the trade could have, if they wanted to, made me buy it from them down here for $140. It's not very common. Usually people will just wait to the full expiry date because, um, they could just, if, if they want to get out of the trade, they would just sell that contract to someone else instead of forcing the assignment. But it, it does happen occasionally. So uh, if that had happened, I would have been fine. And as we see, Airbnb went up, so I would have done well on the other end anyway. But at the expiry date, we are at 167, which is obviously well above 140, which means this expired worthless as well. And we just keep our premium of $520. These are all American, by the way. Uh, Final trade for the month here is Win Resorts, another one. Um, this is a covered call, not a put. So that means I already own the stock. Um, and I originally own it at a cost basis of $100 a share. 
So I'm selling the strike at the exact same cost basis that I bought it for or was assigned it for. And I'm just collecting the premiums month after month. I've actually been holding win for probably a year now, getting maybe $150 a month off of it on average. And I'm very confident it will hit a hundred at some point. And, um, you know, I might move on to another stock at that point, but below a hundred dollars, I think win is a good value. And I'm happy to hold it here and keep collecting premiums. Cause as I said, it, this, this type of trade is all about the income. So, um, we have two contracts. That's 200 shares of win. We have the sale date was February 28th. That's right here on the chart. And we only are open for 15 days. So this is actually quite a short length of time here, which is why we don't get as much money. If we had had a longer period where the trade is open, then, you know, you can get more money, but there's also obviously more risk that it will move past your strike price. Um, we got $112 a share for this. And as we can see, we're $100 a share. The strike price is way up here. So we were close before. And uh, as I said, in the past year, I've continued to sell these these calls on this and, and continue to receive the premiums. But uh, obviously down here, nowhere near. So we were basically in the, in the clear the entire time this trade was open. And as I said, if it does go above and it gets called away from me, I'm happy with that as well. So... Uh, what's it all add up to? Well, at the end of the day, we made $864 American. And in my local currency, that's $1,082 Canadian. Uh, and the goal with this uh, monthly options income is to create another income stream of $1,000 a month. So goal accomplished this month, we made uh, over $1,000 local currency, um, and it didn't end up costing us a thing. So we continue doing this month over month. We should make about uh, $12,000 a year, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Um, and if you do this, you just have to know you will get assigned stocks at certain points. Um, you will have to either roll over those contracts, which basically means you extend the strike date out another month and very often you actually receive more premiums in the meantime and that's because someone on the other end thinks it may go down further or you take assignment so you better have the funds to do that make sure you're, you're not making these trades if you don't have the money whether it's selling other stocks whether it's using your margin uh, or just having the cash on hand you have to have the funds available to take assignment of these stocks Hope you like this video, guys. Hope you found it interesting, uh, educational, and uh, it'll give you some ideas for your own trades. Be sure to do your own research. Uh, make sure you have the money to back up any moves you make and uh, trade safe out there. Please consider hitting like and subscribe. It'll really help the channel and uh, see you next time. Thanks. Bye.